Kelvin Kelly 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 mentioned that to me two or three times. I apologize. Quorum uh, uh, being president, I'll call the meeting to order. We have uh, several people from out of town who will be traveling tonight here for item number seven. Would the council permit me to call that one out of order? Go ahead and take it up early. Yep. Go ahead. Any objection? No, no. objection. No, sir. Then uh, everybody be safe. We called the meeting to order. Uh, ordinance 17-10, Berea College bond issue. Mayor and Council, Ordinance 17-10 is an ordinance of the City of Berea authorizing the issuance of up to $7,500,000 industrial building revenue bonds, Series 2010, Berea College of the City of Berea, the proceeds of which shall be lent to Berea College to refinance certain outstanding industrial building and educational building revenue bonds that were issued for the purpose of paying the costs of the acquisition, construction, renovation, and equipping of educational buildings located within the City of Berea for use and furtherance of the educational purposes of Berea College, providing for the pledge of revenues for the payment of bonds, authorizing a loan agreement appropriate for the protection and disposition of the revenues and further to secure the bonds, authorizing a bond purchase agreement, tax regulatory agreement, and assignments, and authorizing such other actions in connection with the issuance of the bonds. That is a summary of the ordinance I have been provided with and have reviewed the final drafts, I assume, gentlemen, of, of uh, the all the bond documents and uh, have approved them from the standpoint of the city of Berea as I reported at the first reading. This is a pass-through uh, situation. It does not affect the credit of the city of Berea. It is not subject, the city of Berea is not subject to any claim, uh, nor is the, uh, as a re in the event of a default, uh, nor are the assets or taxing authority of the city subject to any claim. There are provisions for in, uh, complete indemnification, indemnification of the city, uh, and it is the uh, this is a refinance of previous issues. And uh, uh, I, from a legal standpoint, it meets my approval. May I have a motion on the ordinance? I so move. Second. Motion to approve or adopt by Mr. Wagers. Second by Ms. Farmer. Yes, Any discussion, comments, questions? <clears throat> Hearing none, then please respond appropriately to the call of the roll. Mr. Burnside? Abstain. Mr. Terrell? Aye. Mr. Little? Aye. Ms. Farmer? Aye. Mr. Wagers? Aye. Mr. Lakes? Aye. Mr. Van Winkle? Aye. The ordinance is adopted. Aye. Uh, your Honor, uh, introduce myself, Roger Peterman uh, with the law firm Peck Schaefer and Williams. We're bond counsel on this. I was just uh, touching base with Randy, uh, reminding um, it, it needs to be officially announced that there's a public hearing for this, too, to see if anyone has comments. That was advertised. Um, obviously, it's rare that we ever have any comments on these, but it's uh, appropriate to just uh, make people aware that this is also a public hearing. Thank this you. is also a public hearing. Do we have any members of the public who would like to come forth and comment upon the proposed bond issue? Please step forward. We would be glad to hear your comments. <laughs> <laughs> I see none. Mr. Peterman, uh, will that? Seven and a half covered. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. And uh, if the, uh, I, I anticipate that we may have a number of comments uh, from members in the audience about a detour that is going on. Uh, before we get into that, if I may continue to uh, recognize Maggie Kreeble and the Chili Cook-Off Award. It's a good night for it. All right. <laughs> good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Um, in 2009, the Parks and Recreation Department approached the police and fire chiefs to see if they would be willing to assist Madison County's Special Olympics in our fundraising efforts. Um, as 
especially uh, people with children realize that athletic sports programs can be very costly and we do a lot of fundraising to ensure that our athletes are able to have the equipment that they need. Both chiefs agreed and entered into a cook-off. In 2009, we raised $1,800 for Madison County Special Olympics. In 2010, on November 6th, um, the police and fire departments uh, entered into a chili cook-off once again. 2009, the fire department won. 2010, police. Huh. Not a coincidence, not a coincidence. And actually, I'm proud to announce that in 2010, we were able to raise $3,000 for Madison County Special Olympics, which enables us again to wear our warm ups, to have the equipment for track and field that we need, or basketball. So tonight, we would like to take this opportunity to publicly thank our police and fire chiefs. Um, so, if I could have you come up, please. <laughs> very small, small token of our appreciation, but we would like to present you both with plaques of appreciation. Tommy. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. And then. Thank you. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank you. That's really nice. That's really nice. Without our chiefs, none of this would have been possible. So again, we do sincerely appreciate all of their efforts. We thank you. Thank you. And Joyce Pack, Lebo Ro Lego Robotics Group. There's a bookmark inside. Oh, that's the boy's got the little collector. Yeah. Eyes of the robots. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Oh, very nice. Thank you. Shall I just stand here, or is there any other particular place? Is this I want to turn that microphone around here. <coughs> Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. We are. FLL Team 3661, Rise of the Robots. For those of you who don't know what FLL is, which is probably all of you, it, it is an organi organization designed to inspire and recognize science and technology and help 9 through 14-year-olds discover unique, innovative ways to f identify problems and find solutions. <clears throat> this year, our challenge is to explore the world of biomedical engineering to uh, repair energies, overcome genetic predispositions, and maximize the body's potential with the purpose of leading happier and healthier lives. <clears throat> this year, we hope to accomplish that with our solution, the BTDS chip, which we are here to present to you on this night. Firstly, I'd like to introduce the team. Um, some of you may remember us. I know you do. Um, <laughs> I am Josiah Pack of age 14, and I work on mainly research and research-related things. And this here is Shimon Eisenberg of age 13, and he programs this here robot, which we call Alfred Snackenberg. No, just right <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and... Schneider of age 13 also, and she is the team captain and brains of the operation. So, 
<laughs> the beginning of the year, we took a field trip to Rock Castle Regional Respiratory Center in Mount Vernon. And walked by a room of a girl that was 12 years old, and her parents were crying by her bedside. And so we asked them what was their story. Person giving a tour of their story, and they said that her par they've just given her parents one week to live, and that hit us pretty hard because we realized she was our age. Oh, what if that was us? What 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 if we wanted to? If we knew someone had the opportunity to make our lives better, would we want them to take that chance? And um, yes, we would indeed. So. We studied the respiratory system, and we broke it down to one thing. The phrenic nerve. <clears throat> See, one of the leading causes of respiratory-related death is due to spinal injuries, and this is, of course, because of the phrenic nerve, which transmits its signals down the spine from the brain to the diaphragm, which controls the breathing. Well, without a phrenic nerve, there's not a whole lot you can do. Well, I mean, you can be hooked to a ventilator your whole life, forces air, and you're unable to talk, and you can't go anywhere and do the things you want to do because you always have a big ventilator hanging over you. Yeah, I wouldn't like that very much. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> we have researched and done research-related things, and we have come up with our solution that is the BTDS chip. <clears throat> Here's how it works. There's one chip in the brain that converts brain waves into a radio signal that are sent to chips in the diaphragm. <coughs> they receive the radio signal, and it has electrodes built in that convert the radio signal into electrical pulses and stimulate through the electrodes, or, which pulsate through the electrodes to stimulate the diaphragm, thus causing the lungs to expand and contract, thus putting the disabled people back into service. <coughs> We took this solution into a regional robotics competition on December 4th, and we won the Champions Award. Champions Award. <laughs> and we are advancing to state competition on January 29th, and hope for lots of support from our community. And that would be all. Yes. Well, we don't get a demonstration, or uh, what would you have to be hooked up to get a demonstration? <laughs> so the, the one problem is these fell off, both of them. Oh, Right we'll put it on the table for yeah, right right here. What do you do when you go to state competition? Do you have to set it up or do you just describe your... We have to set it up. It has a, um, a robotics table and it has different missions. So you program and build the robot to kind of suit the missions and where it's running. And this one is to push an arm that grabs kind of a, a, a mail carrier. It forces air into the lungs. See what this does. Send it back in the base after it did the mission. Uh -huh. Okay. Hmm. Anything else? Thank you. Uh, congratulations. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. 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 We'll resume our regular uh, agenda and recognize visitors who have comments to bring before the council on matters not otherwise on the agenda. Do we have any such visitors?
go right ahead. Uh, should I speak here? Okay. Um, I live on Herndon Street, and tell us your name. My name is Holly Troyer, and I live on Herndon Street, and um, I'm also representing a few people that couldn't attend tonight. Uh, we're having a, a major issue with a detour on on uh, Dinsmore Street on Herndon Street. It's uh, it's dangerous. It's destructive. The stop sign's been taken down twice now. Um, our tiny residential neighborhood wasn't made to support this volume of traffic. And I've been told a lot of conflicting things about how long this is going to go on. Um, do, do any of you have answers to how long this detour is is going to continue mr stone could you give us a, an update on any information that we have about the project and in that issue we will have a meeting next week with the construction company to try to narrow down their final schedule for this year uh, the ending of this project is scheduled for august of 2011. Uh, the present detour going Herndon Dinsmore Forest Street is to accommodate the traffic because we have the westbound lane shut down at the present time. Now we're going to have to flip that and probably go around Bridgeway Cross and, uh, and later. But uh, the bridge, we'll start pouring that bridge on Friday of this week. More than likely, we'll have the lights at the bridge throughout the winter. They're now putting in the structure for all the drainage on the what I'll call the west side or going up the hill. If when they get that in, then they will put a uh, base coat of blacktop. And if there's a time that this year that they will not be working, then we'll have two way traffic during that time. So, you know. It's, we've also talked with the state, the mayor did last Thursday, in another meeting that we had. They're they are going to put some more signs on 421, trying to direct some of the larger trucks that are coming out of Jackson County to use 421. Uh, we have put some signs ourselves at Shoreline Pike, asking traffic to avoid the uh, construction zone and use short line short line is a city street so any damage that's done we're responsible for the the uh, fixing that damage one of the one of the hurdles that we had to get across when they design when they first do a design of a street like this and there's closures of lanes they also have to have a state approved since this is a state road detour plan and since this is considered a city project, the majority of the detour needed to be on city streets, not on county or, or state maintained highways. They've broadened that now and they're working with us to try to use Gabbertown, Short Line Pike, and 421, which okay. we, we're hoping to cut down the gravel trucks, log trucks, 18 wheeler type situation and give them another a avenue because it's just too tight for them to make that right, turn yeah. through there and i know you've had that problem we also have come through which is an imposition for people that live there and trying to ask people not to park on the street that gives you less conflict but probably as you see it faster traffic exactly and uh and they're rude I've asked, they, they, I've pass, asked our they police, actually pass right pass you on the road to get around I, you. I've asked our police department to be uh, mindful of the things that's happening there. Uh, we will try to post something let them let you know what uh, Garrison Construction's plans are throughout the, the remainder of December and January. So am I hearing that this will continue to be used as a detour because I and many people that live there feel that this is absolutely unacceptable? 
it's it's a dangerous and situation I, I think, you know, that's been imposed right. on our small residential neighborhood and you know my question to to everyone here is it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when somebody is hurt who is liable who's going to be liable well when you know, someone is in injured the, because i've the, i've i have to jump up on the grass constantly when they come flying around that corner well it's our it's our, has, our responsibility or has a child it is our responsibility to try to have some control of the traffic and we'll do a, a a better job at that but when we have with any street roadway that you do a major reconstruction job on the unfortunate thing we have to have a detour we have to be able to man manipulate the local traffic people have to be able to get homes and home in that area and we try to it is very hard on people who are on small streets like you you all have been for years it's very quiet now to have 24-hour traffic it's not just hard it's it's dangerous right. and, and we it's it's a dangerous condition and again i'm going to ask who's liable for for injury when someone's hurt well i think that i think that has to do with the the accident. if and heaven forbid if there's an accident you know the liability then has to be determined at the time of, of the uh, accident yeah. okay well i just wanted to go on public record as stating you have imposed a dangerous condition in our neighborhood and um I think Laura has a few things she'd like to say about it. My name is Laura Kuhn, and I've lived in Berea for 14 years. I just came back from Iraq at the end of 08, and I bought my first house, and I picked Dinsmore Street because it's a quiet neighborhood. It reminded me of my home growing up in Lexington, and I have a, a five-year-old five daughter. She rides the bus, she also gets off in front of our house. And I saw a car go around the bus. And if you've seen our street, you would know that is pretty much a impossible, pretty much, but I saw it. And being a veteran, you literally wanna, you wanna do something. Um, I understand that it's business, construction, you gotta get stuff done, people have to work, this and that. I know, because my job in the Army was a truck driver, and I also know that carrying a lot of tons, like they do with the logs, that's a lot of tonnage on that street, but it's also Boeing, and it's concerning me as a homeowner <laughs> because the city lines are right in the middle of that street, and I've already had sewage problems but is there any way those trucks can get out of our neighborhood because of my child? Cannot play in the front yard. I bought her a new bike. I'm teaching her to, to ride a new bike, and I've got nowhere else to go with that bike. But I also want to ask if, if that can't be done, can we please put a, a slow sign, uh, uh, something, and at the end of our block, can we have a barrier like the, where the dead end is, if we can have some kind of barrier there, because I don't know how many times I've called the cops to come down there and pick up someone that was drunk in their car behind a house. So, I mean, I want to make my neighborhood safe. I'm representing my neighborhood. The barrier you're talking about, the end of Densmore going yes. into city property? Yes, sir. And I, I also see children go back there and play they play soccer, football, that kind of stuff. Uh, I go down there and fly my kite. Holly and all my other neighborhood people, they go down there with their dogs and stuff. But I also, as a veteran, I want my neighborhood to be safe. I'm not going to come home and live in the same crap that I lived over there for 18 months and come home and live around it again and not do nothing about it just because it's a small city it can't cost that much to put either a speed sign slow children or even a couple while the people are working during the day have some people down on dinsmore directing properly 
Because they're, they're cutting that curve, and those trucks can't cut that curve. Mm -hmm. I, I know. <laughs> I drove a head that has 48 tires, so I know. But, that, but I know that everybody has a job to do. We can do the same. We we've the we've lowered the sign. To, we did go ahead and put 15 mile per hour signs. Now people have to whether they observe that or not. That and yeah, we put some no parking signs up. But we can we can put some more children, slow children, children play, yeah. on, on Dinsmore. Yeah, not on Herndon. I've already seen a sign there. I'm talking on on Dinsmore. Yeah, because I, I don't do I don't see nothing on there. But would you consider to block the dead end off? Uh, Randy. Is there anything that we could do to to not allow the truck traffic? I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it seems to me uh, like you can deter the the big trucks somewhere besides. I don't. I mean, you know what we're trying to do 21, now. one, they don't need to be coming through there. Right, what we've tried to do is get their attention with signs on Short Line, Gabber Town, and now 420. I don't know if they put the signs up on 421. They just said that they would. I don't know that they're there. Uh, that's about. We had to close because of the short length that we had by the light trying to stop getting proper distance we had to close uh, silver creek drive hmm. you know so you now use up at the uh, apartment area going through there when we looked at bringing trucks across into our area you can't make the it's very difficult and tight down by our utility building to come through there with trucks also uh, it, it's a very small, tight situation. We understand you all. We'll try to have more police presence. I'll ask Chief well, Gregory it, now. It's not just police. I, I voted for all you guys because I have faith and respect for you guys to do the right thing because you put that faith in me to go over there. Now that I'm home, I want to put in my ideas because I can actually say stuff now and not be looked down on as a soldier. <laughs> but where the, like here's Herndon, mm -hmm. here's Dinsmore, there's, there's Herndon. That's how you turn on there. Couldn't you just temporarily widen those up to where the trucks can make that wide turn? Um, <clears throat> only, uh, we would have to look at what radius, and what right of way that we have in that area. I can't answer that question because we may not have any more right of way along that street than presently is from curb to curb. So I, I couldn't answer that question. And what about going through that dead end and cutting through Berea Municipal up that road? Because that leads straight to 25. There's no really hard turns, sharp turns, like it is going on Dinsmore to Herndon and then back on Forest and then so on and so on. If you go straight through Dinsmore, cut through Berea and then go up that hill, that hill goes straight to 25 and that that's an open land right i mean i don't i don't know how the land is here mm -hmm. center street side there too mm -hmm. I mean, let me going across our field i don't know you can you got to be able to road yeah can we can we look at possibly de a designated truck route as a suggestion because that that is really crowded there for trucks yeah, to we'll, come. i'll i'll talk to the district turns. seven again tomorrow see where they are with their signage and and I seen a tractor and trailer coming through the other day. I think it come from the Cumbries out there. God. I mean, from the standpoint, they come through and they turned around at, at the church uh -huh. and, and was going back after they unloaded this stuff. They don't know. Yeah, they need some designated I mean, truck, truck route that says truck route. I mean, yeah. If you need volunteers to do that till you get a sign, I can go out there and stand out there all day and point. I, I'm used to it. So, I mean, I can show them. Yeah, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm just trying, I'm helping you by helping me, so. Right. But that, that's just my ideas, because I'm just trying to throw that out there. But as a, as a um, truck driver, like I was saying, our little road is Boeing, and with the tonnage on those trucks, I do not <coughs> think that road is going to last anymore. So, thank you. That's, that's all I had to say. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for, for your coming. service. Thank you. Mr. Stone, did you, maybe you answered it. I just wasn't sure if I heard it. Did you have an idea on how much longer that 
one way we'll I really don't. Uh, they're, they're a couple weeks behind schedule right now, and I just need to sit down with them. I know at one time they talked about at the end of this year shutting down and, and coming back in March, which means that they would be at a point where they could open it up to two lane. The bridge would probably still be one lane. But if they got to that but point, if they get to that point, then they'd have to. They have to, you know. The contract, any any construction contract, says that they have to have one lane open at all times. That gives your access for emergency vehicles. And and they shut that down. The the ideal situation is something like we did on Glades Road to do a construction project like this is to cut shut the road down totally and give them the opportunity to work and do what they needed to do but in this particular situation with so many housing houses subdivisions uh, this we have to maintain that one open lane at all times that's the reason they're just working on the drainage on one side and one side of the bridge once that side of the bridge is done we'll move the lights across traffic will go on the new side that they're constructing now the other side will be closed while they demolish that and rebuild it. You're going to be meeting with the construction company. In yeah, I think next days. week we've got some more issues that we have to discuss with them. Maybe another person or two helping direct some traffic, <coughs> help slow some folks down too. Uh, I talked to the police chief earlier, and, he, and he's thinking about putting a car down there and try to slow the speed down. Is is that? <coughs> yeah. Uh, the speed on Harrington, I think they say, is pretty dangerous there. It's yeah, people are rude. They'll they'll honk and pass you right there on Herndon Street. But what about, I mean, can you just make the detour Gabbertown Road? Can you just detour it's on another road? road? No, 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 road. Uh, you really can't do that. I mean, I wish, we, you know, we wish that we could, but you also got people maybe coming in to, that lives in that area or visiting in that area or... Work. You know, we've also dealt with, we have the one, well, we have several businesses there, but we've also tried to work with those businesses, not to, to block their driveway, but uh, a mandatory hard shutdown, I, I don't think, Holly, that we could say that we could do that. Right. I didn't mean like everybody. I just meant the majority of people passing through, not people that live in the area or... I think many of us who live there, I, I now go scaffold cane. I just don't go that way to get home. Right. So I, many, many people I think have changed their routes. But uh, but but just just to be clear, then we, how long can we expect this to go through the end of of December, and then that's it? No, no. August. The construction the construction limits goes through august of 2011. so we're going to be that have, doesn't mean that they're always going to be coming by your street right but that's may, what i'm that's what i'm asking how i can't i can't answer that right now until i meet with them the next one's probably going to be bridge way cross and that way then you know the next right. time i mean we, we have to have some way of getting those around that's what that's what we looked at because i you know i just want to say me and and many people that couldn't attend tonight for various reasons don't want it we don't it's not a matter of speed it's not a matter of keeping trucks out we just we don't want it it it's uh, you know there's a lot of communities here in Berea that wouldn't put up with this and we f don't feel like we should be the ones that are being dumped on here so you know we we don't like it and it's dangerous so that's all I have to say about it. Other individuals with comments to bring to the council? The council would turn its attention to the minutes of November 16th. Do you have changes? I move adoption of the minutes as submitted. <clears throat> Motion to approve the minutes as submitted by Ms. Farmer. Is there second. a second? Second. Second by Mr. Little. Discussion? Questions? Comments? All, of fa all in favor of approving the minutes as distributed signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Minutes are approved. Next under old business, number six, ordinance 11-10. 
Ordinance 11-10 is an ordinance of the City of Berea, Kentucky adopted, adopting the amended Land Management and Development Ordinance 1804 as amended by revising Section 4013 to expand the requirement of development in R3, B1, B2, B4, PSF, Institutional, P1, I1, and I2 zoning classifications and requiring as-built plans to be submitted to ensure compliance with development plans. Two, by revising Section 406. Point three to require that single or two-family residences permitted in other than R1 and R2 classifications shall adhere to R3 dimensional requirements, that all townhomes shall, townhomes shall adhere to R1T dimensional requirements and condominiums to dimensional requirements of the zoning classification in which it is located. Three, revising section 406.52 to provide for additional allowable conditional uses in single-family dwellings. Four, revising four, section 410 sub 4 to provide that restaurants with drive through have one parking space for each three seats. Five, adopting revised Exhibit D regarding drainage easements. Six, amending exhibit Appendix G by adding G-8 relating to certified as-built checklists and adopting an appendix, and adopting Appendix 0, oh, I guess it is, providing for grading and filling requirements, and seven, by making such other minor revisions as may appear in the revised text attached here, too. This is a recommendation from the Planning Commission after going through an extended process and hearings uh, as a second reading. May I have a motion on the ordinance? <clears throat> so moved. Motion to adopt by Mr. Burnside. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Lakes. Discussion? Comments? Questions? Hearing none, please respond appropriately to the call of the roll. Mr. Van Winkle? Aye. Mr. Lakes? Aye. Mr. Wagers? Aye. Mr. Jennings? Aye. Ms. Farmer? Aye. Mr. Little? Aye. Mr. Terrell? Aye. Mr. Burnside? Aye. Ordinance is adopted. <coughs> Before moving to new business, I'd <coughs> like to call on Dale Van Winkle to do some uh, new business of his own. Thank you, Mayor, City Council. I'd like to introduce to you and to all the citizens tonight a new employee that we uh, started yesterday. Her name is Amanda Haney. Amanda comes from a background of construction. She has a degree from the University, uh, Eastern Kentucky University in construction management and technology. Uh, she's worked on several projects on the depot as, as manager and, and working in those projects and has a good background in construction. <coughs> she has been hired as our codes enforcement officer uh, and after the first of the year, right now she's learning the office procedures and all that, but after the first of the year she'll start working on her building inspection certification and in the future will be one of our building inspectors. So we're looking forward to Amanda. We think she'll do a great job and we're glad to have her on board. Thank you. Welcome, Amanda. Thank you. Dale. Next then, uh, number eight, ordinance 18-10. <clears throat> ordinance 18-10, and I don't know, why did this print like this? Do you know, Rain? My window's seven and your... Okay. I'll get a clean copy of it. Uh, ordinance 18-10 by summary is an ordinance of the City of Berea, Kentucky, amending the Land Management and Development Ordinance as amended by adding a provision pertaining to conditional use permits providing that the harboring or maintenance of chickens in residential zone classifications shall be permitted as a conditional use and subject to certain conditions and limitations. First reading. Any comments or questions? Bid review, depot renovation and folk center roof. I have two recommendations to bring before the council uh, this evening for uh, renovation projects that we've had. First of all, the folk center. We advertised for a, a roof replacement, opened the bids on September 28th, for the uh, replacement of the roof at the folk center. And tailed in that bid package was that the roof will be stripped down to its original <coughs> deck material 
Any rotten and damaged decking material will be replaced. All new fascia board will be installed on the building. A self-sealing ice and water barrier will be installed on the entire roof system. A breather blanket then was added to the top of the ice and water barrier to allow the roof to breathe. Neither one of those are on, was on the original construction, which has caused the detriment to the roof probably about 10 to 12 years sooner than it should have been. Covering uh, the breather and the ceiling blanket is an is 18 inch wide, 30 pound felt. That'll be added uh, between each run of the uh, red cedar shakes. Uh, shakes of the premium grade split <coughs> red cedar, and they're also to be sprayed with fire retardant uh, treatment. Also, all the valleys, 16 ounce copper flashing will be added to all valleys and extended up the walls and chimneys as uh, flashing. Then a red cedar ridge and hip cap units will be installed. Also a six inch half round 26 gauge galvanized steel gutters and downspouts are to be installed on the building. We had three bidders on this project, Richmond Guttering at $249,999. Brighton bid $217,000. Superior Home Improvement bid $138,398. We've checked Superior's uh, references and their work come out actually very, very good. Everybody that I could talk to. <coughs> and we would recommend, we have a budgeted amount of $150,000 for the roof uh, replacement on that building. We have about six major leaks in that building, uh, we have two places where the floor is starting to turn up because of these uh, leaks. So we would recommend uh, that the Superior Home Improvement 138398 be awarded the bid for the roof replacement. Questions so, or comments on the recommendation? I move to accept the bid. Motion Second. by Mr. Van Winkle to accept the uh, recommendation. Second. Second by several uh, council members. Let's choose anybody. I believe, I believe Virgil got it first. I'll sure. give it to I'm Mr. Wagers. Any discussion? Um, All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Bids awarded then to uh, Superior Roof. Thank you. Where are they How from? soon can they start? Where are they from, Randy? Mr. Winchester. 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 Yeah. Are they the ones that done the? They didn't do the the, the dresser building. No, that's Brighton. Mm -hmm. They did that. They're, no, uh, they can start at any time. Weather permitting. Weather, weather permitting. Yeah. <laughs> weather weather permitting. permitting. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah actually, they're they're really damage to the floor is a real concern because uh, that building is used so much by so is. many different groups, and I hate to see it. I guarantee you, this weekend if it rains, I'm in trouble. <laughs> no, I hope it doesn't rain. <laughs> the second bid that we had was for the renovation of the LN Depot, or house the our tourism commission. We bid out uh, that particular uh, job about four or five weeks ago, maybe longer. We had several bidders on this particular uh, job. We also had some ad alternates and some deducts as the bid went out. We've had two public hearings that uh, several of our council members want, and, and a few people from our community came to look at the, the print and the, and the scope of the work. In the last couple of weeks, as we've discussed the uh, renovation of this building, our original intention was to renovate the building itself. During the process of design, we talked about adding 2,100 square feet to the back of this building. It would be open space for use. And we talked about that during our public sessions and other sessions that we talked with Tony Worley. After looking at our budget of 550,000, what we had in, in our original budget, and looking at the uh, initial 
goal was to, to renovate the building itself. We have, would like to recommend to you this evening that we accept none of the alternates, bid alternates or additions, that we strictly renovate the building. The low bidder on the renovation of the building is Gilpin Construction out of London at $499,000. And that's what we'd recommend this evening. Does, can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Does, does that count putting a roof over that existing part back there? Yes, sir, it does. We will dry it in then. Yes, sir. Does that yes, sir. count? That's part, of, that's part of the, yes, sir. Fixing the, drying it in and painting it. And, yes, sir. And yes, sir. That's part of the renovation. Just making no, no. That's the renovation of the original building, and that is okay. included. Okay, okay. That's, that's, but that's making it all new looking. Yes, sir. Okay. We have a motion then on the recommendation. So moved. Motion to uh, accept the recommendation by Mr. Burnside. Second. Second by Ms. Farmer. Discussion? Mr. Little. All in favor of the recommendation to allow Gilpin Construction to uh, have the bid at 499000 signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No? No. No. I see two no's. Uh, the motion carries. Committee reports, audit and finance, Mr. Jennings. Nothing to report. Human resources, Ms. Farmer. Uh, yes, um, I was going to report that the Human Resources Committee met November the 18th uh, for interviewing a candidate for the Codes Enforcement Officer. Uh, you met our candidate tonight. We recommended that Amanda Haney for, uh, be hired for this position. And Dale has explained, I think, part of the rationale for that. She's a, she's a very talented, capable young lady. Um, and the Human Resources Committee is, I would like to meet Thursday evening, this Thursday, that's uh, December the 9th at 5.15, a uh, brief, brief interview for a candidate for police officer. And I think we only have one candidate, is that correct, Chief? Yes, for sure. Okay, so it will be a, a brief meeting, 515 Thursday. Thank you. That's all I have. Parks Committee, Mr. Lakes? No report, Mr. Mayor. Public Works, Mr. Burnside? Uh, no report, Mr. Mayor. I uh, do have a question. Uh, maybe this is not the time, but I'll use it uh, since I'm on now. Uh, the question came up at our work session about whether we're going to have a meeting or not on the 21st of December. I don't know when we're going to get to discuss that, but. A meeting of the council? Of the council, yes. Uh, we have one scheduled. It's our regular uh, third meeting or, or second meeting the third Tuesday of the month. Does the council not want to meet? I would like to meet. You would like to meet? Uh, do we have um, matters to con be considered, Mr. Stone? Any any uh, action items or uh, activity? Well, from the agenda that we have this evening, there could be second reading, would be second reading of the 18-10. Uh, we also have uh, the bid document is out for the uh, garbage collection service for next year that's to be in your office by the four o'clock that evening with bid opening that evening at 6 30. if we chose not to have a bill, uh, meeting then we notify those who have picked up bid packages of the change of a bid opening but so anything pressing would be the second reading or the opening of that bid at this point we have a meeting scheduled uh Council want to do otherwise? I hate for Mr. Burnside to be disappointed. I don't like for him to be disappointed. Jesus. <laughs> Mr. Jennings, I'm trying to hold you to the very last. <laughs> Get that last meeting in and you're ready to fly away. <laughs> so that means that you, you would also agree that you'd be willing to meet on the 21st? Oh, yes. Thank you. I don't want to, but I, I'm going to miss these guys, some of them. So. <laughs> So for fraternity reasons, you'll be here also. <laughs> Only fraternity reasons. 
Well, it doesn't seem like we've got much of an input or a movement not to meet. Anybody disagree? Is there a motion to uh, cancel the meeting? <laughs> Sounds like we're going to meet then. <laughs> okay. Do we have department heads? Any department head like to supplement uh, the written report? Ms. Crable. Sorry, Randy. Thank you. Good evening again, Mayor and Council Members. I just wanted to take a quick minute as we're all rushing around with the um, Christmas holiday and trying to get ready during the month of December that the Parks and Recreation Department has a slew of activities that are going to take off with the bang starting in January. Everything from toddler playtime to indoor movies at the Folk Center, we've got a little something for everyone. But of course, most of us like to indulge a little bit over the holidays. So I don't want people to forget that starting January the 3rd, we will um, start the new year with our fitness, our group fitness programs um, and classes. On Mondays and Wednesday nights, starting at 545, we'll have our brand new cardio tone class, which we're very excited to introduce. Tuesdays and Thursday nights will be Zumba, so a little Latin dance for everyone. And we also have a variety of other classes for people to try. So if you're looking for the gift that keeps on giving, we do invite people to purchase their um, discount pass cards for our fitness classes. Those are on sale right now and can be picked up at the park office. If anyone has questions about that particular program or any other program, they can visit our website or call us at 986-9402. What a deal. It is. <laughs> Discount passes, it's, yeah. it's a great gift. <laughs> Anything further? No, nope, that's all I've got. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Any other department head <clears throat> like to supplement the written report? <laughs> City Administrator's report? Continuation talk about the Prospect Street uh, project. We have had several questions by residents along that uh, corridor as we work. I will say that Garrison Construction has done a very good job of working with those people and tried to answer the questions. And I have also, and I appreciate Mr. Carter, he's also gotten several questions directed to him, so we are trying to answer daily the questions that we have from residents down there. Uh, we have talked to District 7, reiterate that last week about trying to use uh, Gabbertown, Short Line Pike, and 421 as detours, and we'll continue to move in that particular direction. We had a meeting last Thursday afternoon with District 7 concerning the Mentalist Pike project. Uh, about five months ago, the state adopted that as their project. The involvement that the city will have, we will be responsible for the movement of utilities on that project. The state presently is doing the title searches for the 33 pieces of property that has to be bought to supply the right of way for that construction project to take place. They're telling us, under their best guess estimate, that it's going to be one year for purchase of that property. But they have, are trying to speed that process up. And we are staying in constant contact with them, with the school system, with District 7, about what we can do as far as getting this project moved as quickly as possible. That's a three-lane section of road from the intersection of the bypass back to Mady Road with sidewalks on both sides. Uh, also, we are looking at and worked diligently in the last week about Mady Road connecting Mady Industrial Road and Mentalist Pike and the railroad crossing. We are looking at we've asked cdp engineers to look at the upgrade of that road to widen it to two 12 foot lanes with shoulders also we're talking with the state department of transportation in frankfurt and with csx railroad to see what possibilities we could get about getting traffic uh, gates 
put up at that crossing prior to the school opening. Because what's going to happen, and we do realize and we sympathize with the concerns of the Madison County School System, is that a large percentage of your students do not ride buses. The buses may be told not to use the crossing, but the parents will use the crossing. So it's, it's really imperative on us as a city to work with this particular project, even at the upgrade of Mendless Pike. We need those gates, so we'll be bringing updated reports to you. There's a pot of money, it's federal money, that the railroad companies contribute to that's distributed to each state. And then you make a, your plan and you apply for that money to get the gates or work on the uh, at-grade crossing, whatever has to be done. CSX actually does the work. We're also looking at it as the use of some of our own funds, if that doesn't happen, to see that this project goes through. And that, that we will be presenting and be talking about as we go forward in our amended budget, in our new budget. As we've already stated, uh, changing topics, uh, personnel openings. We still have the one codes administrative assistant. We have two police officers positions open and the interview will be with a certified officer on Thursday evening. We have two part-time positions open for weekend work at the tourism office. Regretfully, as far as uh, personnel, this, is, this morning we received Doty Harris's <coughs> letter of termination. He won't be able to return and it's very unfortunate. We do appreciate what he has done at Madison County School System as a school resource officer. He loved the job and he was highly respected. He was national, he was recognized nationally. <laughs> for what he did down there and uh, we, we bid him Godspeed and, and we hate to have this happen, but it's, it's, uh, it's where we are today. Uh, Mr. Van Winkle has, is setting up with Kelly Baker at District 7, a meeting to talk about intersection lighting with the bypass. Because every time we ask him, we, we're going to go, he's going to go down there and meet. We're going face to face and make sure that we get some kind of resolve on this. So, uh, also this week, working with our utilities, we've ordered the uh, materials needed for the lighting for Hidden Creek and Brook Green. We will need three uh, rights of way or easements across yards that we'll be working on in the next month or so with some of the residents there to see if we can uh, bury the lines across their property. So we won't have any overhead lines in either one of those subdivisions. I didn't say about that. Uh, Monday the 13th, Billy, six o'clock Monday. Sir. Six o'clock. Uh, six o'clock Monday. Yes. All right. Uh, Mickey Mills will be here in this room to talk to the council and interested parties uh, concerning recycling. Mr. Mills was a former mayor of Frankfurt and has worked in the with Lexington and also now with Bluegrass Recycling. Uh, as we go into our new contract uh, for garbage service uh, and how can we improve our recycling numbers here in the city. So that'll be six o'clock Monday the 13th here. He's a very astute individual. He knows, yes. he knows what he's talking about. Uh, Thursday the 16th at the Artisan Center is our employee appreciation dinner. And the 22nd of December at 5.30 will be the swearing in of the mayor and the 2011 and 12 council members. Are there any other? I'll take any questions. Questions for Mr. Stone. Thank you. Thank you. I just have one letter I received from Time Warner. 
informing us that due to the increasing cost of programming, <laughs> along with other operating cost increases, Time Warner finds it necessary to adjust basic and standard tier rates effective January 1. Basic cable service will rise from $20.68 to $22.95 per month. Standard will change from $42.73 to $46 a month. However, 80% of Time Warner customers will not experience a rate increase because most customers subscribe to one of their service packages and enjoy the guaranteed 12 months rate. Mr. Mayor, may I make a comment? Uh, I've been talking with Time Warner and also with uh, Linda Ain, who is our consultant when it comes to our franchise. Our franchise is up in April with Time Warner, so we will be bidding out that again. So I, we did lose quite a bit of leverage when the state communications tax was passed about four years ago, five years ago, and they, they all the money goes to them, and they held us harmless uh, for that money. But we will have an opportunity to bid that out and to try to talk with the Time Warner about their service and, and their rate increases at that time. Thank you. Council comments? Mr. Burnside? Nothing. Mr. Terrell? No comment. Mr. Little? No comment. Ms. Farmer? No comment. Mr. Jennings? Nothing. Mr. Wagers? I was going to bid everybody farewell. Thank them for being on the council the last two years. But since we've gone to vote to have another meeting, <laughs> I'll save it till next time. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Lake? I believe Virgil won another one. No comment, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Van Winkle? Oh, my man is here. Meeting's adjourned. <laughs>